Hello, we're looking at using console multiphysics to solve problems in acoustics. We've opened up this built-in model that studies the eigenvalues of the acoustic modes in a hard-walled room. Now let's try modifying it to solve another problem in the same ge geometry. How about instead of looking for the modes of the room, we uh, see what happens when sound starts coming out of those loudspeakers in there. So to do that, we need to do two things. In the component node, we need to add some more physics to make the edges of the loudspeaker vibrate. And we need to new, add a new study to study this frequency domain acoustics. Now, if you want to add new nodes, there's two ways to do it. One is that you can right click on the parent node and then you get this long list of things to add. Or you can go to the appropriate tab here and press a button. So I'm going to go to physics. Now I want to set a boundary condition. I want the front walls. I won't, I'll just, if those uh, loudspeakers are cuboids, I'll just make the front face of them vibrate. So that's a boundary setting. So if I pull down this boundary menu, I've got lots of possible things that I can set up on boundaries. And here I want a normal velocity. So if I look in the settings window, I can see the equation that I'm applying, but it wants to know which boundaries to apply it on. So at the moment, if I select the front face of that loudspeaker, we'll just make the whole face there. That tells me each of these surfaces has a number, so that turns out to be number 57, and that one. So for now, I'll put them both there, and I'll say have an inward velocity of 0.1 meters a second. Now, we're going to be studying in the frequency domain so the frequency with which they'll vibrate will be set independently. That's just the amplitude of that sinusoidal velocity variation. And that's all we need to do in the physics node. And now I can add a new study. And if I go to the study tab, and add study, it opens this extra window here and there's three kinds of preset study, or I could maybe have a custom study, but that's plenty for now. So frequency domain is what I want now. I'm going to double click on that and it's added a new study two to my model builder tree. And I'm going to close this window because I'm short of space anyway. So this is a frequency domain study and the settings window allows me to specify how I want that to work. So I'm just going to give it one frequency to study at and 90 hertz seem to be. Let's make it 100 hertz, nice round number. And there's plenty of other settings, but that's all I need for now. And then I can just compute this study just with this equal sign here. And again, that didn't take long to calculate. And it's populated the results node with some more plot groups. Are the ones that it assumes I'm going to want. And the first one is acoustic pressure. And that's got a surface. And it doesn't seem to be showing anything at all. Zero pressure. That's a bit surprising when the two loudspeaker fronts were vibrating. But to see what's happening, I'm going to go here. I'd like to see a moving picture of the sound waves radiated by them. And I'm going to click on animation here and select player because I want to play it in here. And it's going to complain, but that's just not a problem. That's just because the default kind of animation, it assumes I want to loop over all the frequencies that I've played. But if instead 
So it's put this animation node under export, even though I'm actually viewing it within the uh, model. But if instead of going through my stored solutions, one for each frequency, I do what's called dynamic data extension. Remember, we've solved the Helmholtz equation. So we've solved for a pressure distribution that varies sinusoidally. If we put that sinusoidal variation back in, because we're doing it with, we're effectively finding a complex function over that domain. If I now press play, We'll see, and if I ask it to keep repeating that variation, we'll see that even though we couldn't see any pressure when we just plotted it, it is there. It's just because it's a complex field. The field was entirely imaginary at that point in the sinusoidal cycle. And in fact, if I go back to the surface node and say, actually, I want to see the imaginary part of the total pressure. By default, it was just put in the plot. One. There it is. And you can see it consists of positive and negative pressures. Total pressure here means uh, incident plus scattered. If you have any fields like that, not in the sense of total. Uh, pressure, so it's still an acoustic pressure relative to the ambient pressure in the room. Now, I don't particularly like this colour table for pressure fields that can be positive or negative, so instead I'm going to produce this one called wave light, which assigns red to high pressures and blue to low pressures, so that makes it easy to see where my waves are going. But zero pressure is actually some way into the red here. So if I click, tick this box that says symmetrize color range, then I can be sure that zero corresponds to ambient pressure. And then we see our waves. And if we go back to our animation, press play. Now, because it's a standing wave, we're still seeing the pressure going up and down. Sorry, not because it's a standing wave, but because it's a purely hard room with hard walls. We're just seeing the pressure going down and it's interesting and we're not seeing much pressure on the surface of the speakers, even though that's where the sound's coming from. So in the next video, we're going to modify some of the boundary conditions to maybe make it a little more realistic so we can actually see where those waves are travelling.